people who followed the math here, and I think it was fairly simple math, are going to be on board with this. But I don't think this is going to tally with their experience of reality. Like, when we get a letter from the doctor, it doesn't seem like 99 times in 100 we end up getting off the hook. It seems like the doctors are right more often, like much more often than that. That makes me feel like other factors are coming into play here. Well, two things coming into play. One of them is that surely, as you say, other factors are coming into play. On the other hand, our impressions of what happens very often don't line up with the statistical reality. So it could be that you are uh, optimistic or that you are in a small group where there's very, very good doctors or something else. So your picture of reality may be um, biased. Uh, and then, of course, as you point out, this is a very idealized setting that we've got here. But still, uh, even if I'm off by a factor of two and it's only one in 50, still that's not worrying to the degree that it might be when you see the test and it's not qualified for you at all. I guess the elephant in the room is you're talking about exotic disease X that only one in a thousand people get. But normally if you've reached the point where you're being tested for it, you're showing a bunch of other symptoms. So you're probably no longer a one in a thousand, are you? Like if you've got, if you've got the purple spots on your skin and the fever and the rash, you're pro although it's one in a thousand for the man and woman in the street, you've probably come down from one in a thousand, I would imagine, if you're being tested. Well, if you've got symptoms, those are the other factors you were mentioning, but there's plenty of routine screens that we do in the population. Cancer screens, as we said before, HIV screens, all kinds of screens where we just test people without uh, regard to whether they have symptoms. And that's another application of this, uh, is that if we can target our testing toward those who are likely to be afflicted, then we can make much better use of our medical resources. Do you feel like this kind of mathematical knowledge helps you? Like, has it, do you put it into practical application when you get that letter or your loved ones get those letters? Are you calmer than you would be otherwise, or? I think so, but it's, uh, just in this one example where I've spent uh, a bunch of time thinking about it, I think there's plenty of other cases where I uh, freak out irrationally along with everybody else. So when you become familiar with an example, uh, that helps you stay calm. When something's unfamiliar to you, even if you're uh, a very uh, rational sort of person, it can be quite scary whether that there's something really to be afraid of or not. Do you wish more people knew this? Do you think it would be good? Oh, I think that Bayes' rule is a fantastic thing for people to know. Uh, inverse probability, better living through statistics, actually. If you can understand something a little better and be less upset by stuff that doesn't matter, of course, that's a huge win for everybody. Well, once you start getting interested in applications of Bayes' rule, you'll find many all over the web. But uh, one that I find uh, complete, very interesting is, is legal applications. So we can do the exact same analysis uh, in the case of somebody who's uh, trying to identify criminals in lineups, right? Criminals are a small part of our population, at least we hope so, I think they seem to be, and our ability to identify the truly guilty, um, even if that's very, very good because we can identify faces well, uh, if we make mistakes and we make false positives, saying someone who's innocent is guilty in error, uh, even if there's a very small rate uh, of that, we can end up um, putting far more, um, uh, putting people in jail who don't belong there, arresting people who don't, don't need to be arrested, because even if they're identified by a reliable witness, there may be a very small chance that they're guilty. Just to make up some numbers, suppose uh, there's a crime, and suppose there are 10,000 uh, likely suspects, uh, and suppose that the uh, witness is going to identify perfectly that suspect uh, if he sees the right face, but maybe we'll make a one in 100 chance of, of making a mistake, misidentifying an innocent person. Well, again, uh, I won't go through all the formulas, but the effective um, combination of the rare event plus a pretty small rate of false positives would say that the identified person all else equal, no other information, is about one in a hundred uh, chance of being the right, uh, the guilty party. So um, again, we have to take that into consideration because for the police, that's a hundred investigations that it should do before it, uh, before it, it takes the trouble to, uh, to arrest anyone.
Gillian. The quickest possible win is of course seven moves because someone has to put in four stones and there are 728 ways to do that. Oh, and also it's worth saying there are 713 million ways to draw 